it's the next level. Did I not bring you some glee, Mr. Oh, look at me, now I'll burn all the memories of you. Hey, panelers. Welcome back to the show. I'm Steve. And I am Lara. And this is a spoilerful podcast about the fourth episode of The Witcher Season 2. The episode is entitled Redanian Intelligence, and it's a guest at Karamaran extends a guiding hand to Ciri and an invitation to Geralt. On the run in Redania, Yennefer seeks safety below ground. I don't know if she was really safe below ground. <laughs> no. <laughs> she might have, she might sought, have sought it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't think it. it was safe underground. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, so what did you think of the, just initial your initial thoughts? Well, I thought this episode was utterly delightful. And that's for two main reasons that I will get to. I give it about an 8.5 out of 10 USPS delivery ravens. <laughs> Very good. I like your uh, your different rating scales. I don't know if I could be that creative, uh, but it takes I, a yeah, lot I of like, thought. <laughs> I like this episode uh, quite a bit. I, I watched it for the first time right after I edited last week, so I had kind of a break before I, I did the second watch today. And there was a lot of stuff that I had forgotten about, so I need to to get myself to uh, watch it probably earlier in the week to do my notes, but, uh, but yeah, it was, it was good. It was good. Uh, we'll talk about the returning characters we had and, uh, some, some cool things that, that happened. And there was a couple of confusing things as well for me anyway, that, uh, maybe we can talk out and, and figure out as we go along, uh, the way with the, the discussion. Yeah, this marks a uh, my 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 stopping point too because I had told you that I had seen some of the episodes. I had seen up to episode four, and then I stopped watching since we started podcasting. So from here on out, I have no idea of what's going to happen. So you knew when we were talking about at the beginning, you knew that uh, the character was coming back, your your favorite character. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> and you you kept it coy though. You were really good. I, I had no clue. So uh, really really good. Um, well, as we do each week, we'll start out with our new faces and places. And if you want to start uh, with that first one. Yeah, we've got a new place this time. It's Redania, the kingdom of Redania, one of the northern kingdoms. And I'm assuming where part of the episode with Yennefer and Cahir takes place. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have King uh, Vesemir. Uh, he's one of the northern kings of the country, this country of Redania. And, I, you know, there's a lot of... They've got, I don't know, if the, was the guy just not creative? You've got Vesemir, Visimir, yes, yes, I mean, like, there's all these very similar names that it was, I was confused at the beginning of the episode when I'm like, wait a minute, isn't Vesemir, isn't he the guy at Kaer Moran? And I, oh, no, that's Yesemir, or, yeah, <laughs> I'm like, wait, and who is this, and who is this other guy? And Yeah, so I'm glad you do this every week because it, it helps me keep things in perspective. I've learned to do this, uh, Steve, because I have four uncles. My dad grew up uh, one of five boys. All of their names started with L. And then oh a goodness. sister named Lisa and me, Lara. So like, <laughs> keeping them in order was essential. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. So uh, we've also got Dijkstra. He is, and I had to research it a little bit because I wasn't quite sure, but he's Vesemir's head spy master. And hot damn, it's Graham McTavish. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love him. I am a big Outlander fan, and he was in parts of Outlander. Okay, I started watching that show, but I didn't, couldn't, just couldn't get into it. Uh, so I'm not really sure why. But uh, uh, yeah, uh, I was confused with the whole thing with the owl thing. Was that him looking through the eyes of the owl, or is there some other character? I don't know. Through- I don't know. So I guess it's, okay. it's to be revealed. Okay. Okay. So we're, we're we're both not sure on that. Okay. Yeah, that and I don't. Was... I try not to read ahead about anything about the books or the mm-hmm. show because I'd rather be surprised. Right. Uh, and next is Dermain. He is a young, hearing impaired elf among the many persecuted elves. And his time is short, but he's impactful. He leads Yennefer and Cahir to the Sandpiper, helping them escape the city. Hmm. 
And uh, we'd have one returning character this episode. Well, one minor returning character. And we later have a major returning character. But returning is Dara, the elf. And he's the elf. Uh, if you all remember in season one, he helped Siri after the fall of Sintra. Um, was helping her through the forest. But after finding out that her grandmother was que- Queen Calanthe, he abandoned her. Yeah, I it, when, as soon as I saw the kid, I was like, he looks familiar. And I had to go right to IMDb to go, is that the same kid from season one? And sure enough, it was. So uh, very, very cool. And apparently he's Ooh. got an axe to grind. So they have yeah. found out he makes a good spy. Yeah, he's going to spy for uh, Dykstra, I guess, is the thing. Which that's a little, you know, like how, how, uh, how credible can he be what did Dystra use do you think to to be able to convince him because i mean he's an elf you think he would he he's taking him out of prison so you think the first thing he would do when he gets to century go hey uh they wanted me to spy but i'm not going to do it i'll give him false inf-, you know or or something what what did he give i, I wonder if we're going to find out what to, what Dystra did to him or gave him in order to to make him cooperate yeah i wonder if just his freedom was enough incentive cuz who knows how those elves are being treated. It, I mean, it seems like they're being treated pretty poorly. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. I was, I was a little confused. So uh, I guess we'll find out here in the next, uh, next, next week or maybe sooner or yeah, in a week. <laughs> anyway, uh, with that, we can go uh, directly into our top five. Oh, you didn't know. Reclaimed as Zintria under Fringilla's leadership. Fringilla? It's funny how quickly people forget about you when you're no longer of use to them, isn't it? Laura, why don't you go ahead and start? My point number five is burn, burn, butcher, burn. <laughs> Woo! We get the return of my beloved Yaskir. <laughs> and like Yennefer, I just had the biggest grin on my face when I heard his voice. I, I instantly recognized him like, it's Yaskir. <laughs> Oh, he's a little heartbroken that Geralt dumped him and and he's got his breakup song going. (laughs) And uh, the show, I don't know, when Joey Blatley, who is the actor who plays him, he has such perfect wit and comedic timing that the show just feels 10 times lighter when he makes an appearance, even though his, uh, you know, performance in this episode is fairly heavy. But uh, I I love his mean girl snipes with Yennefer. Uh, they're, They're just so snippy with each other. And and he's the sandpiper. He's he's the one who's leading people to freedom. So, you know, it just shows part of his character. Yeah, I found that this was one of mine as well. So I'll just go go to what I had about uh, Yaskier. And was was there a one of the stories where Geralt was called a butcher, or am I misremembering that? Okay, yeah, I he wrote that, his I... first song about that because is it was the first episode of the first season. He's he's in Blaviken and he kills all those. Um, those rebels who's who are with Renfrey, and he he gets dubbed the Butcher of Blaviken. I do remember that now. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, and I, I was a little also. It seemed a little odd that he would be the Sandpiper, though. I mean, does it? I didn't think like character wise. I didn't wouldn't make that leap that he would be so bold, and. It was. I was a little confused there at the end too. How many times has he done this before? You think he had figured out how to get past the Dockman, right? Because I know he says he did it differently every time, but I'm kind of like, yeah, but this was a this one. Like, it just it was confusing to me a little bit of him being. Uh, but I I did love his discussion with Yennefer about how, and maybe this is the clue as to why he became the Sandpiper is because he reckon he was there. He said he was there uh, when they when they took elves from one of the locations, and he just could see that this group is these northern kings are not going to stop at just the elves. They're going to anybody they deem as other or that threatened them. He's they're going to so eventually they'll get and it almost seemed like he was scared that eventually they're going to get to his type of his art, his type of people, you know. Um, okay. Yeah. I, um, well, this this is a that's a I think a quote I had for later, but um, I would just bring it up now because we're talking about it. But he says to Yennefer, um, they'll come for the elves, Yennefer. 
They'll come for the dwarves. Then sooner or later, they'll come for everyone. Anyone they deem as the other. So eventually, no artist is safe. So, you know, he's an artist at heart and everything. And that quote, um, I instantly recognized it from a famous quote. So I, I, seeked it, I sought it out on the interwebs because I know that that sounds very similar to a famous quote uh, about the Nazis. And that quote, um, I believe, is a bit of a play on a quote by Martin Niemöller. Um, I probably said that wrong. He was a prominent Lutheran pastor in Germany, and he emerged as an outspoken public foe of Adolf Hitler. And his quote is, first they, come for the so first they came for the socialists, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionist, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was, there was no one left to speak for me. So I think that was definitely a play on that famous quote that um, Gaskier says. And, you know, he has a point there. They may not stop at just the elves, you know. They may start going for everyone who they see as other. Yeah, yeah. And the only other thing I had, <laughs> it made me chuckle every time when Kahir comes into the room and Yaskir grabs that bottle and like like thrusts the bottle at him as if he's threatening him with the with the neck end of the bottle. I'm just like, what are you going to do with that? So it made me chuckle both times when I watched the, the episode. I thought it was really, really great. Uh, so yeah, so that, that was right in there included with mine. So what's your next one? Um, My second point or fourth point is oh my god it's Graham fucking McDavish <laughs> my other main reason for loving this episode like I said I'm a big Outlander fan but he's also in the Hobbit he plays an elf in the, or a dwarf in the Hobbit and um he's also in this star spinoff which is called Men in Kilts where he goes around Scotland with his Outlander co-star, Sam Hewen, and they just try all things Scottish, and it's just charming. So I I kind of love him. Um, Dijkstra has this amazing entrance scene where the two, two mage advisors are talking to King Vesemir, and all of a sudden, knife gets shoved through one of their throats, and he walks in and grabs the, uh, pours a glass of the potion, or the whatever it was they were going to give to the king to drink, gives it to the other mage, and he passes out dead. So apparently he stops a, an attempted assassination, a, an assassination attempt on Vesemir. Yeah, and that was great. That scene in his, I guess it's his study or his room or whatever, where he's shirtless walking around talking about the white flame and how are we going to get to him and nobody can get to him and and the owl is just watching him and then he you know he walks up kind of straight up to the owl looking it right in the eyes almost as if he knows the owl is is seeing. I, I don't know. They, I, I'm waiting for that to be revealed that what's going on with that Al, but uh, yeah, he was, he was pretty cool. And, and uh, it's, it seems like he's going to be an interesting character to follow through the rest of the season. Yeah. And he's, he's just great at playing just, uh, just a, a crazy off the rails kind of character after seeing his portrayal of his character in Outlander. Right. Okay, good, good. Um, my next one is uh, the creature in the sewer. It, we never really fully see it. You know, but it really reminded me a lot of the, the the Star Wars trash compactor scene where where you know Luke gets pulled under and we we see this and this was another one of those moments in the show that kind of confused me a little bit, but the you know the uh the 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 hearing impaired elf gets pulled down and Yennefer and Kahir are trying to 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 pull him back up and they ask the old elf for help and he refuses and he runs away, you know, kind of showing that he's not you know, and he says something about survival or something like that. But then at the end, he's the one who sacrifices himself for the others to get on the boat. So that character seemed a little inconsistent mm -hmm. to me, you know. Um, yeah, I think he he was maybe trying to redeem himself because in the moment he was afraid and cowardly and he ran away. And maybe, who knows, maybe on reflection, he realized what a coward he was and, and finally decides to stand up and, and do something so that they can get away. 
Okay. Okay, I can see that. And uh, and then, you know, the end of that scene where they get out of the sewers, apparently it's lucky they were close to the exit, I guess, or an exit. But, you know, Yennefer has this amazing meltdown right there in front of Kahir when Kahir figures out that she doesn't have her powers. And I've, I've got some of his quote in, when, I'll, when we get to quotes, but I just loved her talking about all the things that, you know, oh, they give you power and they take it away. They, they give you love and you find out it's not real and all these things. And then when he's talking about, well, you're, you were the mage and she, re, she tells him the truth of what the real training that goes on at Eratusa is not just how to harness magic or chaos, but it's, it's teaching them how to, convince people convince kings to do what they want you know whatever they want to do so they guide the direction of the politics kind of thing and i thought that was really interesting because we hadn't we hadn't really seen i mean we've seen that and we're starting to see like last last week uh king um Vassal says something about, you know, we can't trust, I think we talked about that last week, we can't trust our own advisors anymore. And so we're starting to see that come out. So, uh, yeah, the political angle in here on, on the continent is is going to be interesting to see uh, going forward. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think we're, internet is getting a little spotty, so hopefully we can make it through. <laughs> Yeah, one thing I was going to mention is Kahir seemed very impressed by Yennefer. He said, you were fabulous at, at Sodden or whatever he said to her. But I, he gave her kind of a look, looked a little uh, like extreme reverence or something. He he was impressed by her. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. And my number three point is Tris the Nanny. <laughs> so in the last episode, uh, Yennefer asked where Tris was and they and her... One of the other mages just said she's been called away. So we find out that she's been called to Kara Morgan, Morin, and uh, she's there to kind of help take care of Siri and teach her kind of how to be a lady. I, I believe that they, uh, Geralt called her there really just to be an advisor, but we really see that, you know, she's, she's admonishing the brotherhood there for for the way they're treating Siri they're they're just banging her up and she has no nice clothes to wear and she doesn't have soap to take bath or any of those things um we note that there might be a little bit of a history between Triss and Geralt the way that Siri looks at them going like whoa what what's up between these two <laughs> although conveniently every time Yennefer's brought up something happens to distract the two. So like, I mean, obviously Triss knows Yennefer and, and I think she even mentions, uh, Yennefer another time. Oh, she, they were, Triss was mentioning all the people who died at Sodden and before she can say all of them, he stops her. So he never hears whether Yennefer died or not. Yeah. I had this, I had this in my notes. So we'll talk about this here in a minute when you get, when you get done with this point. Yeah. And, um, well, the only thing that I really, uh, also noted about Triss is that she told the Brotherhood, you know, you don't give her clothes, you don't give her soap, and she doesn't have rags for when she has her blood. And it says that they're giving her mushrooms to, she's like, but, you know, soon she'll not have to worry about that with all the mushrooms you're giving her. So they're obviously been giving her some some kinds of herbs and mushrooms because when she sits down to dinner, she men she said no, Siri said no herbs or mushrooms. And, and they all kind of gave her sideways glances and she realized probably she shouldn't have mentioned that to Triss. So they're obviously giving her some things. I don't know if it's to help her with her training or if these are the things that were given to them as young boys to um, make them sterile because we know that witchers are made to be sterile. Oh, okay. See, I didn't, I didn't understand all that. That so that's thank you. That's a good explanation there. Um, yeah, I had this in my in, in my my points as well. The the kind of relationship here and what's going on and the the surprise that Siri. So help me out here if if I don't understand correctly. So is is there a difference between the elders and the elves, or is it just another way of saying the same group? Because I think there is a because, difference because the elders, I mean the elves. I'm I haven't heard the elves really talk about the elders unless they're those characters that they've been talking about from the past that are the prophets mm -hmm. and such. Right, but I because don't whenever think they, they're the same, whenever they speak magic, they say they're speaking an elder. 
And then so so and then we find out that Siri apparently has elder blood in her and that elder blood was used to create witchers. So there's another thing going on here. Uh, but yeah, I, it was an interesting twist to find out that that Siri has this elder blood in her and it's it's highly it's very rare. Apparently, they thought it was all it had all been bred out of people. So it's going to be interesting to see where that kind of goes. But I, I did like that, that as you were talking about, the Geralt realizes that Siri needs a woman's influence. And so he kind of called her there. Um, but of course he refuses to go to, to go to bed with her when she offers. And she tells him the next day, you know, that, well, I was, I just wanted your pain or something, something like that. Um, and they talk about, you know, witchers not having emotion and not having feelings and stuff was really cool. And I love that whole part where Trish begins to teach her and they talk about the, the mutagenic alchemy, you know, which is we've already kind of discussed that, that, may, that it, maybe somebody is out there making monsters. But of course, they find out that no, it wasn't mutagenic alchemy that made this monster. It had something to do with with Siri when she destroyed the monolith. And I didn't quite get all of that that was going on there so it, it's it, again it's going to be one of those things that i may have to watch this episode again just to to try to understand exactly or maybe we'll get some more of it in the next episode when they actually go investigate the monolith yeah think, they're, they found traces of the like same monolith material on both of the both of the monsters that they were autopsying and then um yeah, so I think there is a connection, obviously, between Siri, the monoliths, and the monsters. And then you you mentioned that thing about th that they're I think, and, and this is this again was another one of those things that just wasn't really clear. Maybe Triss doesn't realize the relationship that Yennefer and Geralt have or had, and he does stop her naming because he doesn't want to hear Yennefer's name among the dead. If he had let her go, she wouldn't have said Yennefer's name, yeah. you know, and then he would have found out that Yennefer is actually alive. So I, it was all TV that, plot timing, clever TV mm -hmm. plot timing. It's like, no, ask about Yennefer. Yeah. Yeah. And even when he goes and apparently we'll see what happens with between him and uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, the archaeologist guy. Um, Istrid. Istrid. Okay. Yeah. We'll find out uh, what's going on there. Uh, with him so. yeah and of course they didn't say anything either so now he's hanging out with her ex and i wonder if either one will mention yennefer <laughs> yeah yeah it's interesting anything else on that one no that was it she's i okay. and just the fact that tris is a very empathic character she mm -hmm. she was really kind to yennefer when yennefer was afraid she was going to blame her for what happened on sodden hill and she's very empathetic to siri so yeah i like tris a lot yeah yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Um, so let's see. Gosh, uh, we're at your number two, I think. Yeah. Unless you had a point three, or, but I think you said it. Was uh, no, mine was that. wrapped up. Yeah, right up there in the Siri, the Siri and Trist stuff was all there. Let me see if I got everything out that I had with that. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Then my second point was Yennefer and Kahir's plan to escape from Sintra, which tied into a little bit of yours with what I called the sewer kraken. <laughs> He's our monster of the week, but we don't get to see much of him. I think that's maybe their budget friendly way of sticking in a monster of the week. <laughs> get a couple yeah, we of didn't tentacles. Get, we didn't get a big battle in this one really between Geralt and a monster this week. So I was a little, eh, it's like, I don't have that in my notes this week. <laughs> No monster of the week yet. No monster of the week fight, at least. Um, but they get word from Bird Telegram that they're wanted and being sought out. So, like you said, they head underground. Um, they meet Dermain and the old elf there. I didn't get a name for him, so I just call him Old Elf. <laughs> and they learn of this underground railroad for elves. Um, and the inhumanity committed upon the elves when they see Dermain's ears. He had the tops of his ears cut off. Ugh, it's awful. Oh, yeah. And uh, it was so sad losing him. He was such a positive and sweet character. Yeah, and that was just so real, so quick to lose him as well that I was just like, I was really kind of surprised. I was like, you, and I don't know, do you maybe think they, they didn't have him continue because they didn't want to have the confusion of having two dark elves 
in the, on the screen I don't know. that it might or confuse if they just viewers. Create, I don't, sometimes I don't know. shows do this. They they kind of create these likable characters and then they immediately snatch them away from you as kind of a oh shit moment. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why he was gone so swiftly. I thought he was really helpful and really sweet and would have been a good regular character. But we lost him. And just the whole thing of that you explained with um, Jennifer having her breakdown and um, then finding Yaskir, which was amazing. And um, managing to get up on the boat. So, yeah, that was kind of a short point. And we covered a lot of it. Yeah, a lot of mine is is we kind of covered already. I'm trying to see. Um, you talked a little bit about Tress, uh, Tris kind of dressing down Lambert and uh, the other one. Yer, was it Yerd? Cohen. Was he? Owen. It was Owen. Okay. Cohen. Um, Cohen. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of dressing them down a little bit when they were making fun of of Siri. And but I I loved how Siri had kind of when she's there and she gets the bread from Geralt and he's like they were sad that they were that you didn't finish your your breakfast and and then she says you know my grandmother fought battles and wore dresses <laughs> so I thought that was a really cool comeback from her to to realize that that uh, yeah I can I can fight battles and wear dresses mm-hmm. yeah and I like the I like the relationship between. Uh, Siri and the Witcher Brotherhood, because they're like her big brothers who are going to tease and harass her, but then they do feel bad when they've hurt her feelings. Um. So what is your next one? Because I think all of mine we've kind of talked about. Uh, my last one was just more on the mystery of Siri. So um, when, when her and Triss are in the laboratory, um, they, they talk about the material that's coming off of the monsters and Siri just touches it and she's back into another one of her trances and um, the voice, well at first it's her voice and it says, uh, daughter of chaos belongs to us, turn your backs, join the procession, there is only death here. And that last part where they said there is only death here, I am pretty sure was the voice of the deathless mother. Oh, okay. See, I didn't, I yeah, I was totally confused on that. When all that was going on. So I may have to watch this episode again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she's had these these episodes before. But by just touching that piece of the monolith, um, she went into that, that trance again. And then, of course, Vesemir finds this purple flower growing out in the snow, picks it and brings it to Triss because he's he wants to make certain what it is. And what it's called is um, f- Fienwid. Fienwid? I think I might be saying that somewhat off, but they're called Fienwood flowers, and he mentions that um, they only grow where elder blood is spilt, and the only places he found them is where Ciri had bled on the ground during her training. Um, he mentions, of course, like you said, that they were ma- they those flowers were used in the creation of witchers in some of the the potions that they took, and that possibly Siri can bring about a new creation of witchers, but kind of what does that mean for her if it takes her blood to make those potions? Yeah, eek! What is that? Uh, what is that going to mean? Going? Yeah, I, we didn't talk about uh, a little bit that that beginning opening with with Geralt, kind of a training montage we get there at the beginning with the rock climbing with Siri and telling her don't hesitate. If you hesitate, something is going to to get you. Basically, I thought was an interesting take on on that uh, that sort of thing. Um, let's see, my next one. I'm getting into my notes now. Um, the guy on the dock, I thought was really kind of cool. And as he's, you know, he, at first he's impressed with Jaskier and he, he likes him. He's like, Oh, you're the bard. And, and he goes, and he, I loved this. It was so meta, the show kind of making fun of itself, you know, with all the different things that the guy says, you know, Oh, I didn't realize there were multiple timelines. And then, uh, you know, I figured out the dragon twist right away. And I was like, I remember when Mark and I were covering it last year, I had no clue. Like that dragon twist hit me. I was just totally surprised by it. So it, it I didn't guess it either. So it was fun. It was kind of fun him saying that that he figured it out. And then uh, just all the stuff that he mentioned was really, really cool. I thought it was great to have the the show kind of, you know, like I said, kind of poking fun at itself. And I thought that was funny because in the in the last season, it was always Yaskier who was the audience and being kind of meta, like when he talks to Geralt 
while he's taking a bath and he says, you always say you never get involved in human affairs, but yet you always do. And that's what the audience had been saying the whole time. And, and just all the little meta jokes that Yaskier would make. And, and this Dockman is now doing the same thing to him. Yeah. And I hope the, yeah. the um, show keeps that up. And I'm hoping now that Yaskier's back on board, hopefully, then you oh. know, we'll get our we'll get our humor back in the show because I I always thought that was one of the more unique things about The Witcher is it it doesn't take itself entirely too seriously you know it's not like a Game of Thrones where you can't have a little bit of humor and poke fun at yourself. Yeah, yeah, and that's and that's I, I didn't mention it. it was in my notes again I think it was in my Yaskier notes that we don't know what's happened to him we're unsure of his fate. I at know. this point, and so, and I, and I, now I feel even more more bad for you because I made you stop watching <laughs> episode four. So you've been holding in this anticipation for the all these these last four weeks because you're like I stopped in the end with my favorite character. <laughs> it's just like oh no! But as soon as we get done uh, recording tonight, you can go watch the next episode. Yeah, I can so... go see what happens. <laughs> Um, the only other thing I have uh, really of note is, uh, again, and you talked a little bit about this, about Triss and Geralt's prior relationship. This is now the – I think every episode we have had a mention of that Striga episode. And we still have not seen that princess though. No. We have not we have not seen how she turned out and we don't know exactly how long it's been. Been because I, I want to say Faltus looked very close to the same age as as he was, so maybe that happened in the main timeline. I guess it did happen in the main timeline, so that that princess may still be a child or a, a, yeah. a baby. Or no, I think it would they, be they, hard to tell because I think that because the only people who can help us gauge the timeline are the humans so mm -hmm. siri and yaskir so you know if if siri's in the timeline we know we're kind of in the modern our our current timeline but she wasn't well she kind of she was in that episode but that's when they were kind of flip-flopping between future yeah, and past and, and i forgot now no the striga when when this when the striga turned back to a a, a, a almost normal human because i think she still had the claws um, she looked like she was a teenager or a young woman. Mm -hmm. So we just haven't seen that. I don't think we've seen that character uh, yeah. since since then. So I'm I'm wondering if if, if that's if something's going to come up with that character because it just seems strange that they they've made a mention of it almost every episode. There's been some sort of allusion to it, and also to series uh, parentage. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, yeah. so. It's interesting. So we'll see. Because I think that episode was one of the, it wasn't the main episode that let us realize there was a time difference, but it did drop a couple of cool hints that you started to realize these timelines don't look like they're conse cons consecutive. Yeah, because that's a, on your rewatch. That's where you you realize that Yennefer is there in the court when the when that king and his sister are children. Mm -hmm. You know, and so that's when we start to realize that Yennefer has this long time. And I think yeah, she she made some comment about that, didn't she, to Kahir or to to Yaskier when he said, um, he said something about the the prior what happened before, and she said, "Well, you're going to have to be more more specific." Oh. You know, I've had a long, I've lived a long life. You're going to have to yeah. be more specific. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, what well, that that's everything I've got. Um, have you got anything else that we haven't really talked about? My only note that we haven't covered yet is that when we're in the town and you're seeing the the terrible way they're treating the elves as they're loading him into those those wagons and we didn't mention the reason that they're rounding up all the elves is because Zintria has become a refugee city or sanctuary city for the elves and so now all these other countries with elves in them are rounding up the elves because they believe that they could be either spies for Nilfgaard or double agents or they're you know they're going to uprise against Nilfgaard which is very similar to what happened to the Japanese during World War II here in the United States. So, yeah, yeah. It, you see the way they're being treated. But um, 
one thing is there's a there's a crier walking through the town with a bell and he says the wild hunt is coming and i know from the video games that the wild hunt is something very big but like i said i have not looked into it to see what it means but i have a feeling it's going to play a role in the season okay okay very good um yeah there was a lot of stuff I'm, I'm I'm going off my notes now. Now I'm just off my brain. Um, there's a there was a lot in this episode that I wish I had, I had taken um, even more notes notes of because, like you said, I didn't realize those pamphlets that were falling down were they specifically about her and and Jennifer mm-hmm. or yeah okay because okay. that's how Dermaine realized that who they were she, okay. well they realized that she was the elf elf and he was the the man on the run, but he also knew that she was part elven because it says something about like elven scum mage or something mm. like that. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Then with that, that whole attack thing. And that was funny when, when she saved him and he's like, I had it handled. And she's <laughs> like, no, you didn't. Uh, it was really, really good. Yeah. Um, okay. What else have we got here? Um, quotes, I guess is where we're at. Right. Uh, why don't you go ahead? Have you? Is there any that you haven't said already? Um, yeah, I've got a couple. All my quotes yeah. are from Yaskier, of course. Okay. And so this one, I'm going to try and do my best Yaskier voice because it doesn't have quite the same resonance without it. But um, so Yaskier says to the Dockman, "You know, because because first he he's being he's being harassed a little bit by the guy, and he says, <laughs> am I going to say it? Yeah, I'm I love say that. It. I you love know, that." If you could write yourself a little song, you could sing yourself whatever you please. But you can't, can you? Because you are a dockside scapegrace, a qualling feculence, a beef-witted, hell-hated, addle-pated goon. And he continues to to hurl insults in the background as we see Yennefer and Kahir. And I had the captions on, and I'm not quite sure what it was. But in the background, you could hear Yaskir saying, a waste of your father's... Blah blah yeah, blah. It goes. I, it goes blank. <laughs> but I'm like, go, yes, dear. I, I, that I is a talent that. I do not have. That I so wish I had was just the ability to hurl the most creative and colorful insults at people who rightly deserve it. Yeah, I thought it was hilarious when he starts, and you just the the camera goes to to Jennifer, and she's just like. Uh, you know, like she just, just she sees it coming. She knows it's a, what's about to happen. Um, when when Tris first meets Siri, she asks uh, who she is, and she, and Siri doesn't answer. And she says, "I appreciate the suspicion, but be reasonable. Would I have gotten this far if I didn't know the way?" Mm-hmm. When she's trying to get to Kara Moran, so yeah, because Kara Moran is uh, supposed to be really hidden and impossible to find to people who haven't been there before. And my last quote was from Yaskir again to Yennefer after she reveals to him that she's lost her magic. He says it in the most sincere way that it just kind of made my heart swell. He said, chaos could never be done with the likes of you, Yennefer of Vengeberg. Of that much, I am certain. So if it's all the same to you, goodbye, good luck, and good riddance. Yeah. Yeah, that was, and then he leaves, and all we hear is a big commotion, and we see his his uh, broken loot. loot. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> the idea of Yaskir even being attacked breaks my heart. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've only got uh, two others, and uh, one of them is when uh, they were talking about the the uh, uh, mutagenic alchemy, and Geralt says, "Oh, outlawed, so definitely not a mage." Then, <laughs> in a very sarcastic kind of way. Uh, and then uh, the other one I have is from Kahir, and it it was kind of a – this is kind of close to what you were talking about is that Kahir kind of almost has a – I don't want to say it's a romantic thing, but he definitely knows that she did something significant at Sodden. And he says, oh, that's what did you in, isn't it? It stole your power. We all have our time in the sun. Your magic has served its purpose. Perhaps there's a bigger plan out there for you now and she uh she just loses it and i think it's it's going to be interesting to see their relationship going forward and how that affects everything yeah maybe also affects you know whenever Geralt and yennefer meet again yeah yeah so we'll see 
Um, I didn't see any feedback again uh, this week. Um, do have a bit of piece of the news that I'll, I'll share, and it's it's been all over Facebook and several outlets uh, are reporting that Netflix will be dropping all of their Marvel shows come March 1st. So Daredevil, The Defenders, Iron Fist, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, and The Punisher will all be leaving Netflix by March 1st. I think February 28th, 28th is their drop dead date. So I I don't know. I hope they, I kind of hope they find a new home, maybe a Disney plus, but I, I, you know, some of those shows were rough and I don't know how Disney, if Disney would want them on their platform. Cause I think some of those were, you know, mature. I don't remember what the TV rating was for some of them, but I know they were more mature. Yeah. I think they all were the... rated mature, mm-hmm. except maybe so the we'll... defenders, but I don't think yeah. so. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll have to we'll have to wait and see if they find a new home somewhere. I hope that if Disney Plus does pick them up, I hope they don't like re-edit them or something like that. But it also gives us hope for these characters possibly returning to the MCU. I mean, we already know this isn't a spoiler because Spider Man No Way Home has been out there for a while. So if you haven't, if you don't already know this, skip ahead a few seconds if you don't want to hear a spoiler about Spider Man No Way Home. Okay. The guy who played Matt Murdock in the Daredevil Netflix series, Charlie Cox, that's his name. Uh, he actually appears for a very short cameo in Spider-Man No Way Home as Matt Murdock, the blind lawyer who is Daredevil. Best so cameo a, ever. It was. It was just too short. It needed to be more. <laughs> oh, um, I know. So so we'll see what his, what his is going forward. I've seen a bunch of rumors flying around the internet about John Bernthal possibly returning as the Punisher in, in our current MC uh, Marvel universe in you, I guess. Uh, so we'll have to see what happens with all those, all those people, but that's, uh, uh, that's what's, what's coming up. And not only the um, Daredevil, but uh, more spoilers coming up here, folks. <laughs> but if they've, they've listened to your Hawkeye coverage and everything, we got another Daredevil character back in the uh, form of Wilson Fisk, the pig kit kingpin. Played by Vincent D'Onofrio, and oh, he they, and I think it was confirmed by Kevin Feige that he is the same Wilson Fisk that we had from the Netflix series. Mm-hmm. So, well, that's the worst birthday present ever for me that they're taking all of those off on my birthday. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear. <laughs> Maybe that. I'll just sit in bed and watch them all on my birthday. <laughs> With a giant, well, happy birthday, coming giant up. pint so... of Hagen does. <laughs> Like, oh, no, Matt Murdock, <laughs> come back! So, any podcast recommendations this week? Um, one recommendation that I would like to throw out there is watched it in the '80s with Damien. He's got his guest host this week. Um, well, this week and the past week is Amelie, and they were covering both the 1984 movie of Dune and the recent 2021 movie of dune and i'm a big dune fan so those were really great to listen to so listen in if you get a chance very very cool um and the only one i would mention quickly is on the the uh pirate core entertainment podcast network is run for your lives with paik and daphne they cover all sorts of movies that make you run for your lives. And I send them in voicemails for as many of them as I can. And uh, so if you want to check out uh, a good movie coverage podcast, it's called run for your lives. Again, it's on the pirate Corps entertainment network. We would love to get your feedback. And obviously you are listening to us on your podcast player of choice. If there's an opportunity to give us a review on there, we would love to hear your thoughts and love to get a five-star review from there. We are on Spotify, Google play, Apple podcasts, uh, Amazon, all the podcast players out there. Give us a listen to follow us, subscribe, all those kind of things that you can do. Check out our new website at wwwpanels 2 pixelspodcastto pixelspodcast.com to submit your theories and feedback go to facebook group facebook.com panels to pixels we're on twitter at panels to pixels that's panels to pixels the word panels spelled out the number two and then pixels or email us at panels to pixels one at gmail.com that's panels to pixels the numeral one at gmail.com 
You can find us on YouTube. If you search for Panels to Pixels podcast, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up. And we are on Instagram at Panels to Pixels podcast. Check out all the other podcasts on the Next Level Online Radio Podcast Network. We highly recommend them. Wilhelm, The Melting Pat, Podcast Zero, and so much more. You can go to the ne- go to nextlevelradioonline.com and check all of them out there. Next time, we will continue The Witcher Season 2, Episode 5, entitled Turn Your Back. So, Lara, what is your podcast proposal of the week? Okay, just as we were talking, I realized I have not thought of a proposal this week, but um, we've been having some problems with my daughter's fish and it not eating when we want it to eat. So, you know, we have to put our finger out there and have him realize it's coming up. So um, maybe maybe a podcast on uh, how to train your goldfish. (laughs) How to train your goldfish. I love it. I love it. Uh, and of course, for me, uh, you can hear me right here. I will be be with Daphne next week. We will continue our coverage of Snowpiercer Season 3. Snowpiercer's getting good. If you have not watched Snowpiercer, I highly recommend it. And I highly recommend Daphne and I's coverage of it right here on Panels to Pixels podcast. With that, we have come to the end. I'm Steve. And I'm Laura. And this has been Panels to Pixels. We will see you on the next panel. Good night. Good night. night.